Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about Nudibranch by Irenison Okoje. Okoje is a Nigerian-born British author, winner of the Betty Trask Award in 2016 for their debut novel Butterfly Fish, and the Akko Kane Prize for her short story Grace Jones, which is actually in this collection here. I picked up this book because I recognised the author's name uh, from being one of the authors that contributed to the short story collection Hag, which I've reviewed recently. Uh, it's a modern fairy tale collection. Check that out, it's really good. This is also a short story collection. Totally weird, really surreal. First thing I'm going to say about this book is that the content warning list is going to be as long as my arm. This is not a book for people who are easily upset. It's not a book for people who are squeamish or don't like to read things that will make them uncomfortable. It probably has a lot in it that's going to awaken some not very nice memories for some people. If you're going to read this book, go in carefully and look at the content warnings first. Just to give you some kind of idea of sort of the mad nature of the collection, a woman accepts candy from a stranger, starts to turn into licorice. A monastery filled with sex-swapping monks catch things falling out of a void in reality and carry around the living tongue of a dead saint in their pocket. A sea goddess crawls out of the ocean looking for a mate on an island full of eunuchs. A homeless man falls through a crack in reality to the very beginning of time. This book feels very new weird. It's genre defining and you can't really put it in any other box than new weird. It's got comfortable settings with weird off-key elements that make it feel like an acid trip or a dream that slowly devolves into a nightmare. There's A to B narrative in this but for logic is just out the window. While I love this book I can understand why a lot of people might not. This book, this book took me 10 days to read even though it's like 230 pages long. It's so dense. You really have to concentrate, you have to read every line carefully to fully appreciate Okoje's use of metaphor and bonkers simile that somehow still works in a really beautiful way. You just sort of have to accept that you're not going to be reading a book that you can 100% unpack and understand every single aspect of. You kind of just have to strap in for the ride and accept that this is going to be an experience to be had. If you go into this expecting the world builds with logic and to be handed a why or a reason, you're going to be disappointed and you'll probably hate this. Most of the stories are written in third person, but feel as intimate and personal as if they were written in first. Maybe the intimacy, I think, comes from how real and believable the characters are, even those you only meet for a few pages. This is one of the first collections I've read in a long time, where I was very aware, as I was reading it, how important the order of the stories is, lulling you in with more calm stories. At the beginning, it totally throws you off with something that's so strange. And then sort of the, you get into the rhythm of the collection, building to a crescendo and then fading out. That was something that really impressed me. I think it's a well-structured collection, and that's something I don't usually pick up on. One of my favourite stories in this collection uh, was Mangata. It's about an albino man who leaves Mozambique to become an engineer, and then returns later in life to build wells for his village, knowing that in the area albino people like him are killed because of a disgusting superstition about the magical properties their bodies possess. And that's the thing that really happens, that's real. It's a beautiful story um, with so much symbolism and initially so much joy in it. The way an author can make a dusty village in Africa sound like home to somebody who's never set foot on the continent really says something about Okoje's skill in word choice and emotion when writing. Reading the reviews of other people who have read this as well, there seem to be sort of two schools of thought. People who overall liked the collection, but didn't like a story called Point and Trill, and people who didn't like the collection as a whole, but thought Point and Trill was pretty cool, which I thought was kind of interesting. Point and Trill is a story about a man uh, and his wife who go paintballing in the forest uh, with one of the man's childhood friends. While it is one of the most visceral, shocking stories in the collection, for me, it felt the most like a generic horror and less like something that really fit in here. For me, it was the weakest story in here because it didn't fit the tone of the book. This collection is definitely experimental. When people say experimental, they usually mean either the stories are 
laid out in interesting formats or told in a strange way. But this is really experimental in terms of content and language choice. Lots of metaphor and simile that is unapologetic in that it doesn't try and explain everything to you. You have to read it carefully, deconstruct it, piece it together attentively. Some stories in here feel like they're written for an audience that's really going to work hard for it. Even the physical scenery uh, in the stories that's described is confusing because it's described often in terms of non-physical, non-visual things. And you really have to build it line by line and adjust what you're imagining as more is revealed. I really like this. I'm going to give this four stars. Next year, I'm definitely going to pick up more by Koje and read their debut novel, Butterfly Fish. I'm sort of worried to see whether the strangeness of Okoje's short story skill translates to a novel, but I'm definitely curious enough to pick it up and have a go. So that's it. That's my last single book review of 2020. Thanks for sticking with me all year on those. Follow me on Twitter. I'll link that down below. Check the content warnings. Uh, they're down below as well. If you've read this, if you've read anything else by Okoje, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm really interested to know because it seems really divisive, her style. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.